A Christmas Carol by Block 2, Group Green. One late thing Christmas Eve to get time for those stories, but here in the office of Evan Mr. Scrooge and his long dead partner, Jacob Marley, are those and tale games. Let me say again, that old Marley was dead. This you must understand. Mr. Scrooge, sir, may I add some coals to the fire? Absolutely not. Coal costs money. Just can't keep you warm. Not really, sir. Then I suggest you get a new one. But, sir. That's enough, Mr. Cratchit. I suppose you want to be off tomorrow. Yes, sir. This was only once a year. You want me to pay you for a day when you're not working? Better be given earlier the next morning. Scrooge's nephew arrived in hopes of spreading cheer. Merry Christmas, Uncle! Bah! Humbug! Christmas a humbug? Surely you don't mean it, Uncle. I do. What reason have you to be merry? You're not wealthy. What reason have you to be gloomy with all your riches? Bah! Humbug! What is Christmas at the time of wasting money on things you don't need? If I had my way, every idiot who goes about saying Merry Christmas would be boiled in his own pudding. Uncle! Nephew! Let me celebrate the holiday in my way, and you celebrate it in yours. But you don't celebrate it. Let me not celebrate it then, but take my advice. Celebrating is getting you good. There are many things that do us good without making us rich. Though holidays have never put a scrap of gold in my pocket, I think I am all the better for having celebrated them. Yes, yes. Quiet, Mr. Crutcher, or you'll celebrate Christmas by looking for a new job. Don't be angry, Uncle. Have Christmas dinner with us tomorrow. Humbug. But why not? That's enough. Good day, nephew. Have it have your way then, uh, then, but I shall keep my Christmas spirit till the end. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Merry Christmas, Mr. Cratchit. Happy New Year, Master Fred. There's a ridiculous notion. My clerk with barely enough money to feed his family and a crippled child too. Talking about a happy new year. I must be mad. in his dreary house. He heard the door fly open and the rattling of chains. What's that noise? Walking through the heavy door of Screech's chamber came a ghost with death-cold eyes. Its head was wrapped in bandages. It had chains locked around its body. Hey, Pooh, I'm not a man to be frightened of shadows. You don't believe me? I don't. The ghost raised a frightful cry and shook its chains with an awful noise. Screech dropped to his knees and covered his face. Mercy, dreadful spirit, what is it you want with me? Much. I am the ghost of your deceased partner, Jacob Marley. And I must carry this chain around the world. Woe is me. But why are you chained? Each of these link is a punishment. Ebenezer, I should have been kinder. Your chain of seven Christmas is longer than mine. But Jacob, what can I do about it? Three spirits will come to you. The first one should come at the strike of one! Woo! The woke to find the first ghost, a gentle spirit in a long white gown. I am the ghosts of Christmas past. Rise and walk with me. They passed magically into Scrooge's past. The ghosts and Scrooge were suddenly standing inside an old fuel house. Why were you so sad? No one came to get me. Dear brother, I've come to take you home, 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 home. Home, little man? Yes, father is much kinder than he used to be. A few evenings ago, I asked if you should come home, and he sent me with a coach. She is a wonderful young lady. Yes, what a woman. She died young. <clears throat> yes, she had one child. Your nephew. It doesn't matter to you. A golden idol has a place in it, and you don't care. I guess the world is only the dealings of the world. No, Scrooge, you fool. All of your hopes have merged into the hope of being beyond the chance of that this distasteful world. Gain and haste you. Am I wrong? What then? I'm not changed towards you, am I? Our contract is old. It was made when we were poor and content to be so. 
when it was made, you were a different man, a different heart. And now, have we ever sought release? Never in words. Then what? And everything that made me love you. Would you seek me out and try to win me now? Ah, no. You think not? If I could think otherwise, I gladly would. I sadly can't. You won't even remember me in years to come. That is why, with a full heart, I release you. Then why do you torture me? Hunt me no more! Do you know this place? No, mate. I had my first job here. Well, it's all Mr. Fezziwig while he was a decent man. Next to Mr. Fezziwig, Scrooge saw himself as a cheerful young man. It's Christmas Eve. Yo ho, everyone. Clear the floors, dancing and fiddling for all. Food is brought in. The music began. Everyone started dancing, including young Scrooge. Such a waste of money this is. A waste of money? Look how happy everyone is. Fezziwig was always making people happy. Little things mostly, the way he looked to a pat on the back. With whom do you dance? Ah, Belle, it's young Belle. You loved her, but you didn't marry her. I first need to seek my fortune. So you're saying you could have earned no money by loving her? the ghost of Christmas present. You've never seen likes of me before. The second spirit was gigantic and as grand and joyful as the season. Its eyes were clear and kind, yet they frightened Scrooge. Spirit, take me where you will. Let me learn from it. Let us go then. We will see Christmas as it is now. Where are we? Do you not know the house of your very own clerk, Bob Cratchit? Come inside. They're just getting ready for a Christmas dinner. Tiny Tim hobbled to the table using an old wooden crutch. Mother, there is never such a grand goose as this. Splendid, my dear, a triumph. So excited, ever since such a small geese, I think it was a plus tacky. It's all they can afford. They're not a very well off family. Chief, well, a happy one, especially that. Tim, a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of our feast. The founder of our feast, indeed. Oh, I wish you were here right now. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. My dear, let's not be bitter. I'll toast upon his health because it's Christmas, but that's all. Long life to him. Merry Christmas to the stingy, unfeeling, unkind founder of our face, Mr. Scrooge. Merry, Merry Christmas! And God bless us, everyone. Tell me, Spit, how tiny to live? I, I see an empty chair. And a tiny crutch with no on it. Oh no! So it will be all right! If the surroundings don't change, then the child will die. Forgive me for intruding. But what was at the bottom of your robe? Look here. From its robe, two dirty, miserable, wretched children slipped out. It was a girl and a boy, yellow and ragged. Scrooge stepped back, frightened and yet amazed. Are they yours? They are a man's. The boy is ignorance, and the girl is want. Beware them both. But beware the boy more, for he will be the doom of man. Are there no solutions? Are there no workhouses, no prisons? The bell struck twelve, and the spirit disappeared. Disappeared. <laughs> the spirit found him was cloaked in a black robe. Nothing could be seen of him except his one outstretched hand. You were the ghost of Christmas yet to come. The ghost didn't answer. It pointed one long, bony finger into the night. Ghosts of the future, I fear you more than the others. The spirit took Scrooge to a lonely cemetery that was covered in leaves. A coffin is being lowered into the ground. Whose funeral is this? Why is no one here to mourn? Tell me, spirit, was there anyone in this town who cared for this man? When did he die? Last week. What was the matter with him? An empty heart, I suppose. Little good his money did him. No one here to mourn him. But think of all the money he saved with such a cheap funeral. <laughs> the phantom pointed toward the gravestone. Before I look, Spirit, tell me one thing. Can the name upon this stone be erased? The Spirit gave no reply. Scrooge trembled and looked, and looked upon the gravestone and read the words, Ebenezer Scrooge. 
No, Spirit, hear me. Can the name upon the stone still be erased? I am not the person I was. From this night on, I'll be kind and generous man, and I will honor Christmas in my heart. When Scrooge awoke, he was so happy to see daylight that he laughed out loud. The man had been out for so long, it was a spring of He opened his window and called to a boy. What's today, my fine fellow? Why, today? It's Christmas Day. You mean, I haven't missed it? Do you know the poor ice turkey that's hanging in the butcher's window? You mean the one as big as I am? It's that one. I'll pay you to go buy it and have it brought here. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. I'll have it delivered to Walt Cratchit. They won't know who sent it. Then I must join my nephew for dinner. Oh, joy. Have it missed Christmas. Scrooge spent the rest of the day spreading cheer and joy for the show. Scrooge arrived at the office early. Cratchit entered, shivering in the cold. Mr. Cratchit, you're 18 and a half minutes late. It's only once a year, sir. It won't happen. We were making Mary rather long last night. It won't happen again. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand for this any longer. Poor Bob Cratchit. He was certain he was about to be fired. And therefore, Mr. Cratchit, I'm doubling your salary. Cratchit was stunned. Merry Christmas, Bob. The Merry Christmas that I've ever given before. Your salary is just a start. I'll assist your struggling family any way I can. And Tim, whatever he needs, he'll have it. Now let's warm up this place. Go put some more coal on the fire, Bob Cratchit, before you dot another eye. Let's have more coal. Scrooge was better than his word. He became as good a man and as good a friend as the city knew. It was always said, if any man knew how to celebrate Christmas, it was Ebenezer Scrooge. May that be said of all of us. And God bless us, everyone. They, they end. Ebenezer Scrooge is Johnny.